From our broadcast partner, Derek Mitchell. We're here for an amazing game, facing off not against the Big Ten team, but an Ivy League school, the Yale Bulldogs. Absolutely. The Spartans are facing off the Bulldogs today. Let's talk about Michigan State for a second. They came in, they played their first exhibition game against Wayne State, won by 60 points, and they played their second game against Oakland, won by more than 60 points as well. So the Spartans are red hot this season. They're coming into this game right now, playing an Ivy League school. I'm looking at both some momentum. You can see some of the starting lineups coming out right now for the Yale Bulldogs. Starting at guard will be Avery Lee, number zero, joined by Kylie Capstraw right beside her for their backcourt. Then the other three besides them will be Marissa Chapman, Mackenzie Egger, and Grace Thibel. The home team drawing cheers from the crowd and the Michigan State Spartans will introduce their own starting lineup, starting with Theron Halleck, last year's sixth player of the year for the Big Ten. Absolutely, Theron Halleck coming into this season. She grew a lot, Coach said from last season. She's coming into the season now. She's starting again now. And now she's really taking the reins as a leader on this team. And last year she wasn't that much of that role, but now she's really taking the reins as a leader. Joined by her is Emma Shoemate, the transfer from Ohio State. Took Abby Kimball's starting spot so far throughout the beginning games, and that trend continues today. Absolutely, and the reason for that is because Emma Schumann is such a good shooter. I'm not saying Abby Kimball isn't a good shooter, but she can really help that bench unit score a lot of points. Emma Schumann transferred from Ohio State, and her field goal percentage has been fantastic there. She's 43% for field goals, 41.8% from the three is really what I want to harp on. She's been playing fantastic at Ohio State, and now she's bringing that same scoring on the Michigan State's floor. You can see another transfer that Michigan State picked up in the transfer portal. Grace Van Sluten going over from the Oregon Ducks. Joins Jocelyn Tate as well as Julia Aralt to round out that starting five. This starting five is dynamic for Michigan State. There's a lot of scoring on this team, a lot of able, ability to pass the ball, run down the floor quickly as head coach Robin Fredick loves to play that type of style of offense. And this starting lineup really reflects that. How about their head coach, Robin Fredick? Been amazing so far for this team. Came in last year. Had a program defining year last year, Derek. They returned back to the NCAA tournament. First time in years. Losing to UNC 59 to 56. Absolutely, and honestly, changing around programs is what Robin Kralik does. She was at Asheville, she was at Bowling Green as well, and she turned those programs around. She went to the NCAA D2 Championship two times at Bowling Green. Being able to do things like that and change around programs is what she does, and she's doing it here at Michigan State now. And talking to a lot of people and managers on this team, they want to see Michigan State go on a deep run this year and beat the teams that beat the teams you're supposed to beat, and teams in the Big Ten that are really, really good. So this year is her chance to do it. A big part of that comes in from just how talented this team has been at following the coach's instruction. A team cannot come together, Derek, if they do not buy into a coach's idea. And this team has bought in in full. You can tell a lot of players that came in were players that she's known before, like Jocelyn Tate, players like that who know her system, know how she plays, and immediately buy in. And this team, a lot of coaches describe it as a family. You can see on the court the chemistry they have on and off the court reflects in their play. Lost a lot of players from last year, including Dee Dee Hageman and Mo Joyner, two of their top scorers for the team. They've replaced them quite well, topping that 100 mark in both the exhibition game and their first match of the year, as you just mentioned before. Getting ready for the starting tip here. It'll be Grace Van Sluten starting for the Spartans on the tip. And on the other end, it'll be Grace Thibel. Grace first Grace for the tip here. Battle for the name, Derek. Great way to start the game out, Art. Battle for the name, and now we have a battle for the score. Yes. See where this first point will go. First possession will be bobbled around. A Plinko ball out there is won by Yale, it would seem, touching a Yale player's foot. So it will go to the Spartans. 
What an interesting start to a basketball game. The ball was bobbled up in the air by Van Sluten and Yale players as well, and now everybody was on the floor trying to get it. Now Miss Cassay has an opportunity to start out strong, but very interesting play to start out of the game. Not a start that you see too often, Derek. Both players missing the initial tip, going back down, the ball hitting the back of a Spartan and going in the Bulldogs' favor, then hitting a Bulldogs' foot. Theron Halleck starting off the first possession, finding Jocelyn Tate in the left wing. You can see the crisp pass between these two teams. Julia Ayroll takes it herself. Mid-range jumper is good. If you give the ball to Julia Ayroll in that paint area, if she's able to slither her way and find her way down there, she's going to make that shot every single time. That's routine for her. She was a member of the first team all Big Ten last season for a reason, Derek. Just an amazing player and an amazing season. Now getting moved to a bit of a more natural spot for starting at the four instead of the five. Absolutely. Having taller players and transfers like Grace Van Sloon or Emma Schumann on your team, you can switch the lineups a bit because Julia Ayroll plays more of a guard position, but she was moved to the five because of her size. But now she can really play what she's good at best at. Well, you can see right there, Rasan, that Ron Frelick loves to do trapping on the half court. Shot coming from the Bulldogs on the other end, corralled by Theron Halleck. She's got Grace Van Sluten connecting. Dribble move off the glass, and it's good. That's easy. Theron Halleck, the reason why she's starting today is because she can find people. She's running down the floor. She found Grace Van Sluten for an easy layup. Those are those transition points that the Spartans love doing so well. Marissa Chapman tried using the glass for the Bulldogs, was unable. Ayrault taking herself coast to coast. Euro step across the sea, no good. Taken in by Jocelyn Tate. Stolen away now by the Bulldogs. Bulldogs running away with it off the glass themselves. Left-hander. That one's good for Capstraw. Great shot there from Capshaw. Being able to take it to the Spartans defense a little bit, use her physicality in the paint and make an easy layup off the left hand. Makes it look so easy out there, Derek. I can go there and do that, Joe. <laughs> and I'm in transition. <laughs> Van Sluten turn around, another jumper for the Spartans. You see Michigan State really using that paint area to their advantage. They want to get shots in the low block, left block, right block area. No matter what they can get there, that's really easy pickups for them. Spartans leading by four, Jocelyn Tate. Playing defense like they're down 10. Draws the whistle, Spartans get the call, and they'll get the possession as well. Jocelyn Tate is one of those players ferocious when it comes to her defense. She's one of the best defensive anchors on this team. You can see why, because every single time someone tries to go drive against her, she stops them cold in their tracks and forces turnovers just like she did there. Ayrault standing on the top of the arc. Halleck in a one-on-one -on -one against Avery Lee decides to pass it off, Van Sluten. Dagger step, moving to the left side, showing off those moves, finds Halleck herself. Inside, dribble moves on a showcase, but no good. Darren Halleck showing her moves right there when it comes to her offensive ability, being able to catch that ball, juke out a defender right there and go for the layup. Didn't get it to go right there, but she's gonna try that move one more time in this game, try to get somebody to bite. And something to watch, Derek, is Halleck is one of the best in the Big Ten at drawing fouls. a with the poke, steals it away, but the Bulldogs recover. Chapman, Capstraw in the control of Mackenzie Egger. Gives it back to Capstraw. Stops, pulls up, jumper for two. Capstraw with the stop and pop action. She took that ball, ripped to her right a little bit there, shot that easy shot to go. Fantastic play from her being able to make it look routine. <laughs> Van Sluten staying on the inside, finds a wide open Tate from the arc. A three-pointer falls, Jocelyn Tate. Jocelyn takes she only shot 21% from the three last year, but this year she's turning a new leaf, trying to extend her range a little bit. She did that right there. She went one of two in that first game for the Spartans. Now one of one from behind the arc to start today. Have to imagine that's something that she's worked on quite a lot in the offseason. Absolutely. When it comes to Jocelyn Tate, her being able to shoot wasn't a thing she did last season, but now she's working on it, extending her game, and now she can do anything. She can drive it. She can steal it from me. She can shoot. What else can she not do, Joe? <laughs> we will see. Maybe she'll find a way to get a dunk in there after next offseason. <laughs> Van Sluten drawing the foul under the basket. Whistles were blown. She'll be shooting two. A lot of Michigan State's game plan is getting to the line as much as possible. You see Grace Van Sluten there doing a little spin, taking the contact. Almost an in there, but she almost got it to go. But Grace Van Sluten is going to attack the basket as much as possible, get those easy points on the foul line. That's a big thing that Van Sluten brings to this team is the physicality. Has a large frame staying at six foot three. Last year averaged 15 points for the Oregon Ducks. Not the best efficiency overall. Ended up shooting just under 40% from the field. Gets the first free throw to fall there. Got about two of every three from the free throw line last season. 
Seven of 11 in that first game of the season. One of one now. Make it two of two. Looks like Grace Fansu is trying to turn a new leaf when it comes to free throws. The getting her percentages up, shooting and free throw percentage as well. Improving, improving, and improving is what they're all trying to do out here. Spartans lead 11 to four. Bulldogs just trying to get something to go, but they travel, pack their bags too early. Pack your bags too early is 100% right there, Joe. It's hard in a treacherous environment like the Breslin Center to be able to actually call your plays. And if you're not looking down and being real attentive of the basketball, you can travel a little bit right there. It happens to players. So if you're not really attentive and looking for what your play you're doing, that's just going to happen every single time. And a few years ago, this program moved over from Jackson Fieldhouse to the Breslin Center. Robin Frelix done an amazing job at filling up the crowd here, getting people in seats. Absolutely, the Breslin boom is bringing the boom today. They're really trying to pack the house as much as possible there, Joe. I know you're laughing at that joke right there, but they're trying to pack the house as much as possible. It looks like they're doing that here with a very core fan base for Michigan State women's basketball. Spartans will be waiting to start the possession. As you mentioned, Derek, they're now called the Breslin boom for the crowd, hoping that they'll bring the boom themselves. Pass inside to Tate, using her body on the block, putting it in the sky and falls through the net. Jocelyn Tate right there, she was talking a little bit of trash after that, and that's what her personality is. That was a fantastic shot. A little pump fake, got the receipt, played with a jump, and made an easy layup. Chapman trying to find a lane, instead find someone to pass to. Odom moving outside the arc against Kimball. Avery Lee in control against Jocelyn Tate, one of the Spartans' best defenders. Tate collides into Chapman, sent to the ground, looking for the foul. She will not get it, has to get back on defense. Lee. Has it slipped out of her hands for a second. Tate trying to recover. Lee battling against the shot clock, doesn't get to go. And Jocelyn Tate talking that talk as she walks away. Absolutely. She has to go over to the bench and talk to Joel Weimer, the recruiting coach, a little bit there, trying to relax and simmer down a little bit. That was a very interesting play. She got kind of clotheslined by another Yale defender there. She on the ground. She looked up right at the referee, and he just shook his head. Nothing happened. No play was called, and now they called a timeout right here. I believe it was because it was unintentional that was not called there. Also, the feet were technically set a little bit. Could be technically called a pick in that situation. We'll see how it goes. We're going to be sending you a break for right now. You're listening to Women's Basketball on Big Ten Plus. Welcome back into the Breslin Center. Michigan State leading 13 to four. Following a 7-0 run, four turnovers for Yale. The Spartans pushing the pace quite well. They're reviewing the last play at the moment, Derek, to see whether the foul occurred before or after the shot. There's a battle against the shot clock violation for Avery Lee. They're seeing whether she got fouled in the act of shooting. Absolutely, those plays when you're reviewing those plays, it's kind of really hard to do. Where is the pinpoint actually from? And from a coaching standpoint, you really want to just kind of use that time to coach your team up right now, see what they can do better, see what's going on. And you see Robin Frederick right now talking to the referee, really trying to get this play figured out. And what it seems like is going to happen at the moment is Avery Lee will be going to the free throw line for two. And this play 
basically a free two given away by the Spartans. There was less than a second left on the shot clock when this occurred. Absolutely, and when you're playing very talented teams and rough teams as well, you don't want to give them that momentum. Free throws can change the team's momentum base and get them going over the floor and help them on defense, so really, you really don't want to get that opportunity and give it to another team. And if she hits this, it'll end the Spartan scoring run. First one is up, I jinxed her. Okay, I will take full credit for that one. I apologize to Avery Lee. Joe, that is 100% your fault. Go apologize to her after the game. <laughs> Going for two now. Last season shot 58% from the line, 0% today. You have to blame that on yourself, Joe. I'm sorry. <laughs> Nyla Hampton pushing the pace for the Spartans, calming it down, pulling out Avery Lee, one-on-one -on -one defender. Pushing to that right side, Van Sluten gets the ball on the block, finds a wide open, Shooter from the corner, no good. That was Simmons trying to get up from that left wing, could not get to go. Definitely a routine shot there for Simmons. She's one of those players that can shoot the ball as much as possible. She was two for four in her last game as well. So that's definitely what you want to see from a player like that. Michigan State's players are getting open whenever they want to. We're not getting open looks. Now they have to capitalize on them. Van Sluten will sub out. Julia Ayrault will come in for the Spartans. Avery Lee will sub out. Abigail Long will come in for the Bulldogs. Trying to find someone to pass to, just get this one in play, and they're able to find outlet. Chapman, one-on-one -on -one against Simmons. Simmons had a great game last matchup. Did an amazing job on the offensive end. Three steals, one block against Oakland in that 107-42 victory. Abby Kimball, main defender on Odum. Shot coming up from the arc, but no good for Long. a roll on the other end. Abby Kimball gets it over to her former AAU teammate, Theron Halleck. Simmons inside now, Aroll. Aroll trying to use her body, ripped away. Bulldogs unable to hold on to that one. Mackenzie Egger almost stealing it away from Aroll. Great job there from Egger. She played fan she plays fantastic last season. She had 25 points against Monmouth a game ago. This is definitely a baller, and she's looking to really take it to the Spartans right now. Aroll falling to the ground after some contact. Pushed on the other end, Bulldogs off the glass, too strong. Get their own rebound, almost goes through the bottom of the net instead of the top, Derek. That will not lead to any points in the end. Definitely, if you're playing basketball, you want to get it through the top of the net, but it's hard there. She fought the physicality right there from two Spartan defenders. Try to get it up there. She'll be rewarded as well with two free throws for fighting through that contact, now at the free throw line. Absolutely great job from Egger. Shooting 73% from the free throw line last season. That's one of one to go today. <laughs> Members of the crowd trying to distract her, but instead goes two of two from the line. 13 to five was the score before that free throw made it 13 to six. Nyla Hampton gets it all the way around to Simmons, finds a cutter and Halleck. Off the left side, left hand, no good. You can see Yale turning up the defensive pressure right now when players get easily in the paint like Michigan State does with their passing. They're trying to stop as much of that as possible. And that is why the lead is honestly getting cut short as they're looking to trail back. Little spin around move. Spins right out of the basket instead. Spartans will get the ball. Abby Kimball shoved to the ground. Great physicality there by Abby Kimball. There were two Yale defenders right there, but she grabbed the board anyway. Jumps up, taking from the two defenders, tries to keep the ball in play away from the, the Yale defenders. She does a really great job of trying to keep the ball in her hands at all the time and away from the defenders. Strong fight from Abby Kimmel on that one. Halleck finds Kimmel now. Pump fakes the three, takes the shot, does not go in. Hampton with the rebound. Kimmel is calling for it. Her calls are ignored. Aralt moving inside now. Finds Kimmel in the right corner. No good again. Yale pushing on the other end. Odum being picked up full court by Halleck. Odum trying to find outlet. Finds it now in Egger. Shot goes up, no good. They're now only two of nine from the field. Halleck with a wide open lane, shut down quickly. Puts the shot up, no good, but goes to the line for two. It is impressive how fast this Michigan State team can get down the floor. You have an outlet pass right there thrown all the way over to Abby Kimmel. How fast? Theron Halleck, excuse me, how fast she runs down the floor. It's really fantastic right there. She gets a little mad at the cameraman right there, what the cameraman do, but 
the Spartans are really, really fast when it comes to going down the floor, running as fast as possible, getting as many transition points as you can, making it easy for their scoring. Alec was five of seven from the line versus Oakland. Misses her first attempt today. One of her strongest skills that got her the sixth player of the year award last year is her free throw shooting and ability to get to the line. Shot just under 80% from the line last year. Gets a second to go. That's the sign of a player who knows they can do better when it comes to the free throw line. When she made that second one, she shook her head anyway. Full court trap. Davy Jones locker on the other end. Whistle is blown. Michigan State feeling good on the defensive end, but that will be given to Yale, restarting the possession. You know when Michigan State does that, you can't keep the ball there and just not move at all. You have to be able to run it because the Spartans are going to try to take that from you. Wide open lane, off the glass, too strong. Julia Ayrault coming in on the cleanup duty. That's a great job right there from Yale, being able to try to give the Spartans a little bit of their own medicine, trying to move transition-wise all the way down the floor as fast as possible. If you want to beat the Spartans, you have to match their speed without getting caught up. There will be a couple subs for the Spartans. Abby Kimball going off, joined by Jada Stevens. They'll be replaced by Jocelyn Tate and Grace Van Sluten. A bit of a bigger lineup now. Emma Shoemate is out there as well for the Spartans. Ayrault trying her best, her best to cover. Shot goes up, off the glass for two. Yale clawing their way back, 14 to eight now. Absolutely. Uh, Fraley had to use some adjustments, bring a bigger lineup in right now. Able to use the glass, Van Sluten getting the first field goal for the Spartans in just over three minutes. Very interesting, the shooting splits right here for Michigan State, one of seven for Yale and zero of five, besides that last shot for Michigan State. Tate pushing it up to Halleck, off the glass. Not missing that one. You see what defense does for a team. The Spartans have been on a little bit of a slump, but right now they're really turning it up with a defensive play. Van Sluten, yet again. Derek, you put it perfectly. Defense into offense. Michigan State Spartans getting it done on both ends in the Breslin. That was a great job right there from Michigan State. They were down a little bit, not scoring a lot of points, but they stayed true to themselves, stayed true to their defensive prowess, stayed very aggressive as well. And two steals led to two fast break points. And that is what head coach Robin Fralick has instilled in his team this entire season and last season as well, turning them into a very transition heavy program. Six points and 28 seconds for the Spartans. 20 to eight is the score. You're listening to Women's Basketball on Big Ten Plus. Welcome back into the Breslin Center. A quick break there. Myself and Derek Mitchell are back on the call for you. Michigan State leading 20 to eight right now. Yale trying to get something going on the other end. Three of 10 from the field so far. But that Spartan defense has been suffocating. Gives a breath of air here as Yale will have another chance starting the possession. The Spartans have been giving this Yale team, a lot of work when it comes to defensive pressure, just swatting at every single ball, trying to get steals, fast break, transition points, trying to make it easy for them, but making it hard for Yale. Chapman trying to get around Ayrault. Poked out of the air by Ayrault. Halleck with the corral. Finds Tate standing in the corner. Tate takes a baseline, popped up. Ayrault with the rebound. Maybe not technically a rebound, but gets it back. Tate moving on the right side now. Finishes strong, but that's going to be waved off. She'll be going on the line for two. Fouled before the shot technically went off. That was very legacy. She got fouled before the shot because Jocelyn Tate extended her elbow a little bit, trying to move the player off. Very lucky that didn't get caught and didn't go the other way. Spartans are sitting in the bonus. That's why it will not just be a restart of possession. Instead, getting two. Be a couple subs for Yale. Avery Lee coming back in. She'll be replacing Marissa Chapman. Tate gets the first one to go. Jocelyn Tate went about one of every two last season, shooting 52% from the line. D 
These are her first free throws of this season. And she starts off perfect. Avery Lee gets over to her teammate to bring it up instead. Floater goes up but finds nothing but air. Battle for the ball, Grace Van Sluten taking it away. Tate moving on the other end, poked around. Bulldogs back in possession. A long pass to Avery Lee. Rocking the green shoes out there. Back to the top of the arc. Odom picks up her dribble, finds Lee. Long pass over to Egger. Back to Odom. Pull up jumper, no good. Theron Halleck on the left side, finds Shoemate, moving baseline, has a body collide with her. That will be called, it will seem, and Shoemate will be going to the line for two. Yale just unable to finish these shots so far, Derek. Absolutely, one of eight of their last field goals in this game and three turnovers in the last almost nearly two minutes. Definitely not what you want to see. They're trying to be as aggressive as possible, but the Spartans are really trying to box them out on every single rebound, not letting them get any opportunities to score. You can see some of the stats for Shoemate right there. Misses her first free throw attempt. That was her first free throw attempt of the season. Goes one of two on her first trip of the season. Avery Lee picked up full court by Halleck. Lee getting down low, putting a trap. Gets out. Lee, handoff, Odom. Now more. Egger working on that right side, picks up her foot. Called for traveling. When you turn your back right there, it's kind of hard to know what your footing actually is. You could be on your left or your right, but you're kind of wobbly in that position. And she was right there. Her left foot was up in the air, and she couldn't really keep hold of it. Took two steps, and there was a travel right there. Kind of got to be more aware when you're turning your back to a defender. Have to be conscious of where the pivot foot is and which one is the pivot foot. Halleck finds a lane on the right side. Speeding through and finishing strong. Theron Halleck for two. That's a Theron Halleck special right there. Just going on the baseline with the right hand off the easy layup, using her speed to score. Odom, two defenders sent back in her face there. But she draws the foul. Odom will take that as a win. Definitely will take it as a win, but looking at this Michigan State team, you had Emma Shumay in the paint right there and Grace Van Sloon, two very tall players on the Spartan team. Both had their hands up right there and swatted that ball, but you see Darren Halleck blowing past her defender, being able to score that easy bucket right there. She does that all game, and she did it again right here. She's had a strong showing so far. Halleck with five points, two of four shooting. First free throw for Odom. Does not go in. Odom, the freshman from Syracuse, New York. Trying for her second. Crowd getting loud. Second one is good. That's the way to silence the crowd, Joe. They're trying to bring the boom here, Derek. 25 to nine is the score. Theron Halleck bringing it up the court. Avery Lee getting down low, staring Halleck in the eye. Halleck dribbling this out, making sure it's the final possession of this quarter. 10 seconds remain on the clock. Finds Tate, back to Halleck, driving inside, misses, decides not to give the Euro, finds Sluton instead, and Sluton misses the final jumper of the quarter. There's technically .4 seconds remaining on the shot clock, or on the clock as a whole, excuse me, following the shot clock violation. Now Yale might have a chance for a full court shot here. You never know. This could be on ESPN or Sports Center in the next couple of minutes, but. They do not decide to take the full court shot. Very well, and that is why the lead is where it is right now. But they're going to put up some more points in the second half, Joe. Yes, they will be. Nyla Hampton trying to get that goal achieved already. Whistle is blown. Hampton. Double dribble, it would seem. And now the Bulldogs get their chance. 
See, Nyla Hampton not really liking that play right there. Talking to a couple of Yale teammates. When you look at the Spartan team there, they came in last year, not very high expectations, a first year coach. Now they've already made an NCAA tournament with this head coach just last season. They're expected to get back to that level of play as well again this year. Absolutely, and the roster has only gotten stronger. We lost a couple of scores last season, but they replaced them with transfers like Emma Schumann and Grace Van Sloot. So now you have more of a complete team, a taller roster as well as you really can compete with a lot of players you see in the Big Ten. So now you can say the Spartans are battle tested and they're ready and they have the experience to do so when it comes to getting back to the NCAA tournament. And while this team is not ranked currently, they did receive 16 votes from the Associated Press to be in that top 25 ranking. Give it a couple of weeks and they might be among the best. Absolutely, if you start getting in the conference play and Big Ten play, start playing some really good opponents right there and you win, those sky's the limit for you for your Michigan State. Van Sluten hanging in midair, walking a tightrope off the glass for two. Van Sluten being able to stay midair as long as possible, looking like the flash right now, just staying in there, being able to take contact, go with the easy layup. Contact doesn't matter to Grace Van Sluten. She can just take that and lay it up really easily if she gets to that low block. Having a strong game so far, 12 points already. Avery Lee, baseline, easy to Avery Lee. Getting her first points of the match. That was a great job right there from Capture of being able to keep the ball in her hands, looking to get it stolen by Kimmel, but she was able to actually find her open teammate, Avery Lee, and get an easy score. Tate loses her dribble, stolen away. Bulldogs getting some momentum. Avery Lee facing off against Hampton, picks up her dribble. Finds Odom. Jocelyn Tate, one-on-one -on -one situation. Gives it back to Lee. Pick set four, pick and roll. Broken up by Nyla Hampton. Jaden Simmons over to Tate. Trying to drive down the lane, back up to Hampton. Abby Kimball taking it inside herself, absorbing the contact, blocked back out of bounds. But that will be a little too much contact on that block, drawing the foul for two. Absolutely. I want to talk a little bit about Satello and Julia Arrow come in right now. That was a great job right there. As you see Abby come right here taking the contact. Little pump fake action kind of makes you, makes the defender kind of get confused. Are you going up with it or are you not? And she was confused there. She bit the bait, and now Abby Kim was on the line. Put it perfectly, Derek. That pump fake really got her midair. Kimball did the rest from there. Kimball misses her first free throw. She had a streak last season, Derek, of hitting over 25 straight free throws. I was going to say it before that shot, but I've learned better from before in this game. Hits the second free throw. You see, Joe, that's a better move, being able to not call it so you jinx it, and now you look smart afterwards, so great job. Exactly. Took a few years to learn that one, Derek. Now whistles will be blown. Possession will be reset. The Bulldogs waiting to inbound after a foul on the Spartans. You can see Ina Sotelo, the freshman, in the game now for the Spartans. Chapman beginning the possession, facing off against Simmons. Picks up her dribble, trying to get the pass inside, rolls out, Spartan possession. Definitely, I can see the vision on that play right there from Yale. They tried to get it in the paint to cast draw, but the ball was a little bit out of bounds, a little bit too far, she couldn't reel it back in, and now it's a turnover on downs. Abby Kimball subs out there and Halleck comes in. Multiple point guards out there now. They want to get the passing going on the Spartans end. Halleck, Aralt, pump fakes a three. Inside, Ina Sotelo off the glass, rolls in. Sotelo had such a unique dynamic to this team. Had two points in her last matchup versus Oakland. Yale just barely escaping the trap on the other end there. Draws the violation, taking too much time to pass the half court line. Absolutely, great defense and great play from Sotelo being able to take the contact in the paint, go for an easy layup. The center from Spain playing fantastic right now and getting early minutes in the career. Aral putting up the floater, gets the contact even with the miss, she'll go for two. Julia Aral, the captain on this team so far, First all-team Big Ten last season. Led the team in points per game and rebounds per game last season. She's a fantastic player, an anchor point on this team for the last couple of years for Michigan State, and it's no different that this team, when it comes to scoring, really does rely on our shoulders. 
You can see one of the signs in the crowd. Plenty of fans here for a -Rolt. You and I were here, Derek, just a little over a week, about two weeks ago now, when she played against her sister in an exhibition matchup just a couple weeks here in the Breslin. Absolutely, and when she played against her sister, it really got emotional. A lot of the teammates, Michigan State teammates, were really cheering on her sister when she scored her first point. There's a lot of camaraderie when it comes to those two teams and that dynamic. If you're a family, you're a parent as well, seeing both of your children playing on the same court has to be a great moment for you when it comes to you raising your kids. That exhibition match versus Wayne State, Yale missing the shot there, get their own rebound. Jaden Simmons taking it away. Simmons, three steals last game. Gets one there. Halleck, Euro step across the ocean. Making that rim look as wide as the body of water she just traversed. Darren Halleck riding the waves right there, taking the contact, getting the little tap on the arm for the and one. Does the physicality matter? No, 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 it does not. Because she's going to the line for an extra point. Great shot right there from Darren Halleck being able to take it right to the deuce. Really an amazing shot. Halleck working on finishing has gotten so strong in her third year here. Gets the three-point play as well. And and one for Halleck. Yale getting it up past the half-court line. They're not making that same mistake again. Chapman. Lee facing off against Shoemate. Finds Thibault wrapped up in plenty of bodies. Controlled now. Baseline reverse. No good. Cannot get the finish. A little too much for Kylie Capstra. Simmons. Finds a roll, a deep three-pointer. Makes it look easy. Julia a -Roll, a fan favorite, drawing some cheers in the Breslin. Julia a -Roll, one of the better players on this team. She, that's a three-pointer is another thing in her arsenal. 34% from the field last season. She can really shoot that ball, and she's doing it again here tonight. Doing a great job overall. For a -Roll, that was her first three-pointer this season. Just so strong in pretty much every aspect of the game, Derek. Was recruited as a guard, played center last year. Can help all around on the court. Yale able to get over the Spartan defenders. Thibel picks up her dribble, looking for someone, finds one. Schmidt blocked by Jaden Simmons. The Spartan bench loves it. Chapman tried getting the second chance opportunity, was no good, and then Guillen unable to corral that rebound. Michigan State did a great job right there, definitely stopping all signs of play when it comes to getting the ball in the paint right there, swarming to the ball. There's at least two players every single time a Yale player touched the ball. Halleck finds a roll. Hand in her face, Halleck takes the shot anyway, no good. Long pass forward. Halleck, too much contact on Chapman. Could see Halleck trying to help her up after. Strong sportsmanship being shown after a little too much contact by Halleck. Absolutely, Darren Halleck was blazing down the floor trying to help back on defense because it was a two on one situation for the Spartan player. Ran right into Chapman. Great sportsmanship of death from Halleck. And Julia Ayrault steals it away. Moving with speed, coast to coast. No good. Getting sent to the line likely here. See Julia Ayrault talking to some of the photographers on the floor right there. Almost got ran into as she goes up with that over two defenders. Goes to the line. Spartans back in the bonus. Halleck subs out, Nyla Hampton comes in. For Hampton, came in and immediately became one of the captains on this team, along with a -Roll. a -Roll hits her first free throw there. Absolutely, and the reason why Hampton became a captain immediately is because she, she played with BG when it comes to playing with Robin Freilich, so she has that chemistry right there. Being a, Freilich knows her leadership capabilities and her characteristics, so when she came to Michigan State, because of Freilich, she already knew we have to make her captain because she's that good when it comes to being a leader, and she's already showed that this season. Not only is she used to coach Halleck, but she also played with Jocelyn Tate back at Bowling Green years ago. 
Hampton trying to poke it out. She had five steals in that matchup versus Oakland. You can see why here. Taken away. Van Sluten. Pass up to Hampton. Stops the dribble. Moving baseline. Finds Simmons. Four defenders right on her. Tries to get off a little too much. Being pushed on the other end. Chapman finds a wide open Bulldog in the left corner. Three point shot goes up for Schmidt from that left corner. Great job right there from Schmidt. Being able to see the lanes perfectly, get to the corner where there was no Spartan defenders there. They were all looking in the paint, and she had a wide open opportunity, and she drilled it and ended the Spartans 12 0 run. Jaden Simmons over to Van Sluten, taking in herself. Fade away jumper is good for Van Sluten. That was definitely a fantastic shot. She was on her base leg, little step back, Kobe Bryant type of action. That was a fantastic play from Grace Van Sluten being able to really shoot it from anywhere when it comes to that paint margin. She's had an amazing game today, 14 points, six of seven shooting. Bulldogs get the second chance and they make it good with it. Grace Thibel coming in for the rebound and the points. Hampton, wide open lane to the basket. No good off the glass. Whistle's blown, possession will be restarted for the Bulldogs. Too much contact coming in from Van Sluten. Very good idea calling a timeout right there. A lot of it's going to be going back and forth when it comes to physicality, and she's trying to stop that Spartans momentum and run right now, trying to coach her team up the way that they want to right now, Joe. The teams will step away for a moment, and so will we. 4.05 on the clock, 41 to 16. You're watching Wounds Basketball on Big Ten Plus. We're all back here in the Breslin Center. You can see the Breslin Boom sign with a couple of members of that student section over there sitting in front. Spartans return to the floor as well as the Bulldogs. 41 to 16 for the Spartans, leading heavily up by 25 points. Bulldogs trying to get out of their own end. Shoemate has different plans. Abby Kimball trying to hold on. Shoemate for three, right through the net. Emma Shoemate making it look easy. Just like clockwork right there from Emma Shoemate. She lost the ball a little bit right there. It was going around a bunch of different defenders, but she saw it, stepped back, and switched the three-pointer. Easy right there from Emma Shoemate. Chapman trying to get going for the Bulldogs. Find, finds herself standing wide open for a second, took the shot. Whistles are blown, Spartans will get the ball. I don't think Grace Thibel was expecting to find herself standing so wide open there. You could see her looking for someone to pass to. Ends up just putting the shot up in the end. Hampton, other end. 
Inside of Van Sloot and whistle is blown. Spartans are in the bonus. They'll be going to the line for two. You saw Grace Stiebel there looking at the referee like where was the fob, but it was the right hand. She had her right hand up and the right hand cups Van Sloot on her backside right there. So she definitely followed her right there, but she didn't really understand it in the moment. Hand right around the hip. Have to be very careful with the hand placement on defense. Van Sluten trying for free throws three and four. Misses the third of the day. Third free throw attempt, I should say, not third miss, in case anyone's confused at home. Second shot goes up, no good as well. Two of four from the line. Chapman, one on one versus Abby Kimball. Stand down low. Controlled by, by Geelan. Left hand, whistle is blown early. We'll be restarting the possession. Ben Sluton will have it be called on her. She'll come out replaced by Julia Ayrault. Grace Van Sluton in this game has been playing fantastic. 14 points already, six or seven from the field as well. She's been playing lights out tonight when it comes to offensive scoring. She is one third of Michigan State's points right now. First free throw goes in. Gian. Puts up her second, and Gian, a perfect trip to the line to start off her trip to that free throw area. Absolutely, Gian, the freshman, scored 1,000 points in the EYBL circuit last season. Well, she's a freshman right now, but when she played in high school, she was a fantastic player and a great pickup for Yale. Chapman going against Hampton, 22 on 22, trapped in the corner. Jocelyn Tink combining with her old teammate from Bowling Green for some stellar defense. Some Bowling Green on Bowling Green action right there in the corner, being able to play stellar defense, keeping her hands up, giving no lanes for passing. Kimball inside, Aral back out to Shoemate. Float her up and good. This Michigan State team is feasting right now in the paint, getting everything they want to at those Big Ten letters in the middle. 46 to 18. Tate finds Hampton. Another steal on the defensive end. Forcing turnover after turnover. 17 for the Bulldogs. Aralt off the glass, no good. 17 turnovers there. 28 points off of turnovers for the Spartans. And there's a turnover right in front of our eyes. That's what Michigan State does so well. They try to turn turnovers into points and offense on the other end because the team is so good at running down the floor and trying to score. That is how Michigan State really tries to turn away when it comes to getting leads. I have to correct what I said. That was not a turnover in the end. Hampton touched it last. Now there's the turnover we were looking for. You definitely jinxed it right there, Joe, with the turnover margin right there. But 28 right now, 17 right now for Michigan State, for Yale, excuse me, and five for Michigan State. Definitely not what you want to see if you're Yale, but Michigan State is very good at forcing turnovers. And the person they're bothering the ball right now is the reason why. Hampton, an amazing job on the defensive end tonight. Tate inside to Aral, back out to Kimball, three from the right wing, no good. Kimball still searching for that shot. Has not had it all day today. Zero of three from behind the arc. Bulldogs trying to work inside in the paint. They have not been able to get their shots to fall. Six of 22 on the day. Only two three-pointers attempted by Yale. They've made one of them. Have to wonder why they don't just try staying behind the arc at this point. Definitely it's an interesting thought when it comes to play calling for Yale right now. Should they switch it up? Should they try to shoot the ball as much as possible? Looks like they have more success there because every time they try to drive into the paint, they have a lot of self-inflicted wounds that really hurt them on offense. It's been uh, over three minutes since their last field goal made. A shovel pass over from Halleck inside to Aral. She finished it with ease. That was a great find right there from Halleck. Second assist of the day. Being able to really play as the floor general on this team. Passing it to whoever needs the ball and whoever's open. Ian over to Lee. Avery Lee picks up her dribble, almost picks up the pivot. Three-point shot goes 
up, but no good. Attempted by Magdalena Schmidt. Spartans on the other end, Halleck with speed to the cup. That's 50, Derek. They've got 100, in, they had over 100 in the exhibition match. They had over 100 in the match versus Oakland. Can they get it done today against Yale and pass that century mark against the Ivy Leaguers? I'm thinking it's very possible when it comes to the 100 point mark. Yeah, 50 in one half. Julia Ayrault making everyone take a second to appreciate her defensive intensity. What a block. Wow, Julia Ayrault second in the Big Ten in blocks for a reason. And geez, she said, no, 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 get that out of here, not in my kitchen, absolutely not. That was one of the strongest aspects of her game last season, Derek. She was near the top of the Big Ten in blocks per game. She was eighth in the Big Ten in rebounds per game, second in blocks per game, led the team in both statistics as well as points per game. Jocelyn Tate keeps it alive, Nyla Hampton, other end, poked out last second. 2.1 seconds remain. Can we get a buzzer beater here? I well, think there is an opportunity to do it right now. But I want to talk about that play from Jocelyn Tate right there and see Nyla Hampton almost getting it blocked. Some nice the defense end. there. Full court shot, nowhere near. Emma Shoemate ending off that quarter with a catch. Absolutely, and that quarter was fantastic for this game. Welcome back into the second half here in the Breslin Center. Michigan State leading heavily, 50 to 18. Avery Lee trying to reverse that trend on the other end for the Bulldogs, but misses her three. Darren Halleck pushing on the other end. Some nice dribble moves, reverse layup. Darren Halleck. Halleck's been reversing the game all day long. And she's doing it again right there on the baseline. Staring at the rim, taking the contact. It does not matter. She puts it up with her right hand under the rim. Buckets for Darren Halleck. Avery Lee facing off against Shoemate. Inside pass back to Lee off the glass for two. The Bulldogs have some fight. Great job right there from Lee. Being able to take the contact, smooth, lose her defender a little bit quick right there on the baseline, going for an easy layup. Fantastic outlet pass right there. Ben Sluton. Gets it back. Baseline. Jumper hanging midair. No good. Goes out of bounds on the Bulldogs. Another turnover for them in a night that's been full of them. That will take them over 20. Definitely what the Spartans do very well. There's forced turnovers. There's 20 in this game right now. In the last couple of games, they've been forcing more than 20 turnovers as well. So when it comes to forcing turnovers, the Spartans do a great job creating offense from the turnovers. Trying to make that offense now. Aerol jumper, no good. And Aerol last year was the tallest player by far for the Spartans. Now, this looks like another player out there with Van Sluten towering over her. Michigan State definitely leveled up. You got Shoemate, you got Van Sluten, two very tall players rounding out your roster. Tate playing strong defense, whistles are blown. Little too much movement. Tate thought the call might have been on her for a second, but it was not in the end. It's been very difficult for Yale right now when it comes to keeping your pivot foot down and not traveling. Caught Egger right there on a little travel move. Shot goes up, whistles blown. Van Sluten going to the line. You see what the Michigan State Spartans do so well, they get to the line so easily. One outlet pass into the paint right now to either Van Sluten or any of the players on their team. They can definitely get to the line as quick as possible. Kind of run up the score. First free throw is up and good for Van Sluten. That will take her now to 15 points in this match. Second free throw is no good. That free throw would have broken her career high here at Michigan State. Had 15 versus Oakland, as you just mentioned, Derek. Passing around the perimeter for the Bulldogs. Egger versus Aralt. Getting down low, wants the one-on-one. -on -one. Picks up her dribble, finds Chapman. Chapman, left side, two-on-one. Wide open, Egger gets Aralt in the air. And that is all that the ball finds, nothing but air. 
Halleck, moving with speed, finds the lane off the glass, no good, but she's going on the line for two. Darren, Darren Halleck is so good in transition, going down the floor as quick as possible with amazing speed, being able to rush down the floor right there, get past her defender, a little bit of separation is just enough for Darren Halleck, but she couldn't finish on that play, had her hands above her head because she couldn't finish right there, but she will definitely finish that play again if she gets another opportunity. Misses the first free throw. Halleck now two of four from the line today. Second one is up to make it three of five. And Halleck, 13 points on the night. Spartan steal the way again, Tate. Quick handoff over to Van Sluten, but she cannot finish in the end. That was great defense there by Fiebel trying to contest Van Sluten. Capstraw pulling this one outside the arc. Thought that she'd have a fast break opportunity, but the Spartan defense suffocated it. Inside, off the glass, no good, too strong. Grace Thibel attempting there. It will be called on Halleck. She'll be going to the line for two. Great job from Thibel there, keeping the ball away from the defender. A smaller defender, and Halleck was on her right there. She was able to definitely go up easy with that, taking the contact. You see Halleck was falling a little, but she grazed Thibel's hand. Right That's what they called the foul on, and now she's at the line. Thibel loads for the first. Bounces back right at her. You can see her and her teammate Egger rocking very similar baby blue shoes. Very nice kicks out there. This is the second free throw. Halleck moving right side to the lane. Too strong off the glass. Playing defense, trying to get another chance here. You can see obviously upset with herself there. Halleck was mad, she thought she could easily finish that. That's how she just keeps herself accountable for being able to score those points. She knows she's a leader and an anchor on this team, and she's keeping herself accountable right there. She's had such heavy improvements throughout the years as a Spartan. Coach wants to take her out, give her some words of encouragement. She'll be taken out as well as Emma Shoemate, and finally Grace Van Sluten, replaced by the trio of Abby Kimball, Nyla Hampton, and Jaden Simmons. This is a more defensive lineup for Michigan State, but a small ball lineup, but nonetheless, just as ferocious. A lot of players right now on this team are very good at getting steals, poking the ball out, and running a transition, and that's exactly what you want for Michigan State. They usually run two lineups, a small ball lineup like the one we're seeing right here, and a bigger lineup with Emma Shoemate and Grace Van Sluten down in the middle. Capstra misses both. Rebound by the Bulldogs. Capstra with a chance for retribution. Instead finds Odom. Back to Capstra, out of bounds, another turnover for the Yale Bulldogs. That is 23 turnovers for the Bulldogs right now. Definitely not what you want to see. Capstra right there drew, drove on the baseline, but couldn't get it to go, couldn't keep the ball in her hands. But if she did keep the ball in her hands, it would have been an easy layup. Aerol pump fakes the three. To put it in perspective, Derek, they have more turnovers than points this game. Never a statistic that you want to be weighed that way. Never a thing you want to see from a team, no matter who you are. You definitely want to clean that up when you come watching film, when it comes to building up this season. Turnovers are so detrimental to your success, and it's happening there right now. See a near turnover happen there. Spartans have the ball in Isla Hampton. Hand off to Abby Kimball. Back to Tate. Simmons finds Kimball. Kimball, mid-range jumper, no good. Still looking to break that scoring barrier today. From the field, I should say. She has one free throw made for one point total on the night. Zero of four from the field, zero of three from three. Definitely uncharacteristic for Kimball. Usually is one of the leading scorers on the team. She had a lot of points in that game against Oakland. Odom trying to secure a dribble, takes the deep three, no good. Aralt moving on that right end, finds Kimball, chance for it now, off the glass, no good. She'll be having a chance for more points from the line, still looking for her po first points from the field. But it's all smiles, Abby Kimball. Still feeling quite, quite well out there. 
Absolutely. When you're down like this, you're able to get to the line and take the contact right there. But if you're down to get to the line and actually try to create some points for yourself, you still got to have a day out there and be excited to play basketball in order to succeed. Spartans going with a little bit of a bigger lineup now. Jocelyn Tate and Julia Ayrault go out. Van Sluten and Enos Sotelo replace. Kimball makes her first free throw. Third attempt of the night. Two of three from the line so far. Make it two of four. When you have the depth that Michigan State has as a team, you can definitely switch around your lineups as much as possible. You can bring freshmen in the game. You bring Abby Kimmel in the game. You can bring freshmen like Sotelo in the game as well when you want to go for more of a bigger lineup when you're trapping, as you see right there. Sotelo provides a lot of size. Her and Van Sluten really add an aspect to the Spartans game that was absent last season. Very interesting storyline to watch all year. Abby Kimball started every single game last season. Now relegated to a bench rule. Have to imagine it's for more scoring off of that bench. One of her strongest attributes of the game. Absolutely. She has the role of leading the bench unit when it comes to scoring. And she can definitely take on that role. And having the depth to actually move a player like Kimball to the bench is huge and crucial for Michigan State. Foul called on her there. Too much contact coming in. Yale will get a chance at the line. It's going to be Egger taking two free throws. Definitely a hard foul call right there. Kimmel had both of her hands up, but Egger did a great job of forcing the contact right there because it didn't matter when her hands were up. Kimmel stayed in a neutral position, but it does not matter because Egger did a great job of forcing that contact. Start of the day, three of three from the line. Missed her fourth free throw there. Three of four on the day now. Jaden Simmons finds Van Sluten. Kimball. You can see the passing of the Spartans. This is what gets them wide open looks, such as this one for Nyla Hampton, moving through the lane. Van Sluten working on that block, poked out. Whistles blown. Spartans get the ball back. Definitely, Yale is doing a fantastic job of trapping it every time Grace Van Sluten gets on the low block. They are trying to make sure no points are scored in that low block area by Grace Van Sluten. The Spartans try to start their defense every single time. Their offense, excuse me, by trying to get the ball into the paint to either Grace Van Sluten or Julia Aero or Ines Sotelo as well. And then Yale really try not to do it right there. Foul called on Simmons. Yale will have the ball in the return. 55-21, you're watching Big Ten Plus.
Spartans are up big, but they've been having some trouble from the field. Zero field goals in the last four minutes and 30 seconds. Yale, Egger missing her first free throw attempt there. You can tell Dahlia O'Shea is definitely making some things happen when it comes to changes they want to see from the team, and she's doing a very good job of making adjustments to this Michigan State high-powered offense. Spartans had 25 in each of the first two brackets. That shot from Van Sluten gives them seven in this quarter. Yale, currently four points this quarter. Nine each of the first two. Long, trying to work with the ball. Gives it over to Marissa Chapman now. 22 on 22. Baseline jumper, no good. That was more of using the glass than a jumper in the end there. It seemed like she was stopping for a pull up. Halleck now, pass outside to Jaden Simmons, off the glass, going to the line for two. Great job right there from the Arizona State transfer. She started in all 107 of her 108 games that she played there. Also scored in double figures 59 times. She's a dynamic scorer for Michigan State, a player to absolutely look out for to get a lot of minutes this season. She was 17th on the all-time scoring list for Arizona State. The Sun Devils as well. Gets a point there for the Spartans with the free throw. Absolutely. It's done quite well today. Simmons, currently one point. Two rebounds, three assists. Has a block and a steal as well. Simmons doing a strong job today. She is doing a great job. Getting a lot of minutes off the bench. 14 this game. Definitely one of the premier players on the bench lineup for Robin Fralick. Trying for a second now. And that one goes through with ease. Agger finds an escape hatch. Controlled now by Chapman. Enos Sotelo on the perimeter. Something interesting to see, more of a paint presence. Hampton. Controlled now by Chapman versus Sotelo. Van Sluten comes to help. Long with a shot from three. A bank in to the net for three. Great shower there from Abigail Long. She shoots 36% from the field, so it's nothing new shooting a three ball. She called the bank open right there and scored it. Very nice shot from Abigail Long. Marissa Tra Chapman moving against Sotelo. Picks up her dribble. A moon ball over to her teammate, almost intercepted by Halleck. Bodies to the ground. Now all of them being helped off the hardwood. Absolutely. That's fantastic. Aggressiveness from Yale right there. Five will Chapman, some of your leaders on the team, going on the ground trying to get as many opportunities as possible right there. They have not given up fight in this game. Resulting of the score, it does not matter. They're trying to claw their way back in any way possible. 61 to 25 stands the score. Spartans starting to infuse their bench lineups here to get some play. Kennedy Blair, the red shirt freshman from Dearborn, Michigan coming in. She had some turnover issues versus Oakland during her short time when she played there. 14 minutes, 10 points in that game, but three turnovers. Definitely, definitely not what you want to see from Kennedy Blair. But she was a brawler when it comes to her in high school. 20 points per game, eight rebounds as well, four assists, four steals, and two blocks. That's definitely a D1 level type of player when it comes to scoring. Looking to see how it translates over into the college ball right here. Chapman makes her second. And yes, Derek, you, you brought up an interesting point. When you look at each of these players, you look at their high school stats, most of them were the best player at their high school, if not the best in their town. Now they have to come to a school where they might be asked to redshirt. They might be asked to play a deep bench role such as Candy Blair has. Each player out there on this court has the talent to be the best. Jaden Simmons off the glass, easy two. Great job right there from Simmons. Being able to really stay aggressive and not let the play die out. Stolen now by Van Sluten over to Blair. 
Hampton moving on that right side. Sotelo gets a chance herself, sends a body to the ground. The Bulldogs drawing a charge. Really strong defensive play by the Bulldogs. That's a great job right there from Egger being able to take the contact from the bigger player in Sotelo. Definitely a fresh move. You cannot move your shoulder into another opponent when it comes to rushing in to the paint area right there. That's something that's going to be learned with time when it comes to playing basketball. Still very young Sotelo in her freshman season. Already getting big moments for the Spartans. Big minutes, excuse me. Long, working with the ball, taken away. Another turnover by Yale. Sotelo, off the glass, finishing strong. Great job from Sotelo, her second point of the night tonight. She's been getting a lot of roles, key minutes right now for Michigan State with seven minutes so far in this game. Definitely a difference maker when it comes to the size you can bring to the lineups and on this team. 2-0-3 from the field so far for Sotelo, four points total. Long three-pointer going from Odom, but no good. Nyla Hampton splitting through the defense. Finds a way to get to Jaden Simmons. Out to Sotelo for three, no good. Candy Blair gets the rebound, Sotelo inside. A nice skip pass, that one will lead to free throw attempts for Jaden Simmons. But my goodness, what a pass, Derek. That was an amazing pass for Sotelo. What awareness from the freshman right there, being able to catch that ball. She called for the lob right there. She caught it, but it was a more of a diversion to be able to pass it off to her teammate Simmons to go to the line. What a fantastic play from the freshman as she's getting all high fives on the bench right there for that amazing play. Great awareness from the freshman. A lot of future players are going to be fantastic coming into the seasons as they get older. Yes, this team able to use these games, Derek, as a way to get the youth some playing time. Sotelo, we'll see how much she plays when it comes to conference play, but for right now, she's able to assist in multiple ways. Simmons goes two of two from the line. A lot of subs, Michigan State, almost an entirely new lineup. Candy Blair still out there for the Spartans, joined by Arolt, Emma Shoemate, Jocelyn Tate, and Nyla Hampton. Schmidt finds Egger, back to Schmidt. For Schmidt, participating in the World Cup as a member of the U18 and U20 national teams. Shot goes up and in for the Bulldogs, being scored by Odom. Shoemate trying to respond. No good. Bouncing off the top of the glass. Shoemate almost got that bounce to work right there. It looked like it was left side of the rim, but it bounced and almost went in right there. Shoemate was looking for that three to fall because she was wide open. Couldn't get it to go in that time. Spartans over double the points of the Bulldogs, 67 to 29. 38 points separating these two teams. For Yale, they now have more points than turnovers, fixing that statistic. Shot goes up for Odom, no good. Blair with the rebound, Jocelyn Tate over to Hampton. Spartans have 16 assists on 23 baskets so far. Aral sends it to her bench instead. You see head coach Robin Frilly not happy about that turnover right there. When it comes to conference play, you cannot make certain mistakes if you're Michigan State. So these games are trial runs for you to definitely test out some lineups, test out how to play. But she definitely wants her team to turn, clean up the turnovers that they've gotten so far in this game. And then one situation coming in for the Bulldogs. A very strong finish from Odom. Odom, now two of nine from the field, five points so far. Attempting her third free throw of the game, she went one of two earlier. Abby Kimball subbing in, Shoemate subbing out. Absolutely, Odom has played fantastic. The freshman on this team, she was a high school team captain, averaged seven points per game as well. She also scored a thousand career points, so it's fantastic play from her. Hampton. Moving on that left side, finds Blair. Hand in her face, passes out to Kimball. Abby Kimball makes some space for herself, gives it to Jocelyn Tate. 
Kimball moving around the outside, wanting the pass. Kennedy Blair unable to hold on to that baseline pass, uses her arm to make some space. Lucky she didn't get the call there. Tate with the floater off the glass, no good. Bulldogs, Schmidt looking at Odom, finds her. Odom, turn around, jumper, and Odom starting to light a fire, getting the buzzer beater down. And their women's basketball team trying to claw their way back. Absolutely, and they're showing signs of life. Odume, one of those signs of life, has 10 points right now, trying to get something going offensively for Yale. They've done a great job defensively lately, Derek. They've been able to make some noise here. When you look at the split by quarter so far, the first two were almost identical. 25 to nine, 25 to nine, they were identical. When you look at the third, 17 to 16. Very tight margin, Yale playing strong. Lynn getting to Schmidt. Inside work by he and Mary Meng. Strong defense. Pass up to Blair. Off the left side of the glass. Good job right there from the freshman Kennedy Blair from Dearborn, Michigan. Very close to home for me there, Joe. First points of the game for Blair. Jocelyn Tate pushing it for the Spartans. Hampton finds an opening, floater, no good. Mary Meng able to use her size on the inside for two. We haven't seen much of Mary Meng this season and last season as well. She played in nine games and missed the remainder of the season with a foot injury, but she is a rebound machine, having a career high nine rebounds last season, looking to get some of that momentum back. Lynn. Getting it to Odom against Kennedy Blair. Outside now, moving inside, left hand, no good from Capstra. Abby Kimball moving with speed, slows it down now, finds Hampton. Meng trying for another scoring opportunity, this time a turnaround jumper gets the call going to the line. Great job right there from Mary Main being able to take the contact. A little bit of a tap right there, but it's just enough to get her to go to the line. And there's a pretty decent free throw shooter. We haven't seen much of it yet this season. Shot 6 of 12 last season, gets one there. For Meng, she got the medical red shirt last season. Played in nine games and then had a foot injury that kept her out. The rest goes two for two there. Strong showing at the line. Meng was one of the more tutted recruits that the Spartans had coming in. A 6'5 center being able to really take up a lot of space in the paint and score at will. And it goes back to Bowling Green. She was originally committed there. Robin Freilich came to MSU and so did Meng. You can see the pull that Robin Freilich had when it comes to her players. She brought a lot of players this year and last year from Bowling Green bringing them over to Michigan State and really completing the roster with a lot of great talent that are transfers and are in-house. You can see Meng trying to block this inbound pass, forced to send it far to that left wing. Egger against Simmons. Lynn moving baseline. Plenty of cutters, but she's gotta take it herself. Using the pivot, sends it up, no good. Blair inside, off the glass. Hanging in air for a moment. Now going to the charity stripe for two. Great job from Kennedy Blair. She flew down that lane. She missed with the contact right there. Being able to take it, couldn't finish. But that was a fantastic drive. Taking it coast to coast all the way down the floor. Being able to get to the line. Spartans with two free throws here. Yale so far has not scored in this fourth quarter of action. Blair misses the free throw there. Teammates cheering her up. Second one falls in. Bounced around for a second. Interesting lineup out there for the Spartans. Sotelo next to Meng. Two very tall players. 
This is definitely an interesting lineup. This is the lineup you want to see when you want no scoring going on in the paint at all. And that happened right there. You can see it right there, exactly, Derek. Really locking down the paint. Two big players. Kimball, three-point shot, dribbles in, and the Breslin center loves it. Abby Kimball getting the bounce right there on that three-pointer. Great find right there from Simmons from Kimball, trailing, and she drilled it. She's an amazing three-point shooter on this Michigan State team. Haven't hit one tonight, but hit one right there, and the Breslin went crazy. Mary Mang caught by surprise. Was not expecting that ball to not even hit rim, but instead hit her. Definitely a shock right there when it comes to the ball coming to her. She's laughing about it on the court right now. Plenty of subs for the Bulldogs. Spartans make a sub of their own. They will have Julian Woodard coming in now to replace Simmons. Julian Woodard, the freshman from North Vermont, Indiana. Turned out a lot of offers to come to Michigan State. Kennedy Blair with the two. Kennedy Blair, defense to offense. You see the Michigan State bench going crazy right there on that nice steal, turning defense into offense and making those transition points go. Kennedy Blair doing what she needs to do. Lynn put up the three. It was no good. Now they will have a chance to inbound here. The Spartans trying to defend. Just over six and a half minutes remain in this game. 10 seconds on the shot clock, picks up her dribble, Odom over to Chapman. Five seconds on the shot clock. Mid-range jumper up and no good. Blair moving down with speed like a freight train into the cup. Add one more at the line. Kennedy Blair said, I'm gonna take it myself. Took it all the way down the floor, coast to coast, taking the contact. It's too easy right now. Being able to get that layup for second points of the day. Back on the line is Kennedy Blair showing the team why she can be the number one option right now, Joe. So far, she's gone perfect from the field. Three of three for seven points. Hits her free throw, that makes her two of three from the line. Now up to eight points on the match. Chapman, facing off against Woodard. That's the win. Whistle's blown. Too much movement. One thing that this Yale team has not been able to do is try to stop the movement when it comes to them having the ball in their hands. That one got a call there. That one was actually Mary Meng drawing the foul. A little too much movement on the Spartan end, it would seem. Yale moving inside off the glass. No good, but gets a chance for two at the line. Marissa Chapman. Strong drive inside. It's a great job right there from Chapman. Trying to take it into the paint as much as possible. In the last game against bottom of the sheet, led the team, scored 17 points, shot eight from 13. 61% from the field, three assists and a block. That's definitely great numbers right there from one of your leading scorers on this team. And today, Chapman 0 of seven from the field. Not the number that she wants. Has hit all of her free throws, three of three. And there it goes, three of four. Abby Kimball moving on the other side. Switches to the left hand, back to the right. Finds Woodard for three. No good. Abby Kimball playing strong defense. Chapman trying to get her first field goal. Sotelo stealing it away. Sotelo and Meng, the duo. Sotelo keeping it herself. And she steals it back. Finds Blair off the glass. 86 points for the Spartans. The Breslin Center is booming right now, Joe. Sotelo got that steal, dished it off to Kennedy Blair, and she got it back again. She doubled it up with two steals and two turnovers. 
really helping this Michigan State team gain momentum as the squad goes into the cup and bumping up Sotelo right there, celebrating her. And she's been playing very, very good so far, turning defense into offense. 86-35, Spartans the big lead, 5.07 on the clock. You're watching Big Ten Plus. Only five minutes and seven seconds remain between these two teams. Michigan State, 86, Yale, 35. Candy Blair with the steal and the speed. Tried to get too fancy with it there. Candy Blair tried to create a highlight reel play right there, trying to get it behind the back. Tamari Mangu was trailing right there. A little behind the back action to Sotelo, excuse me, but it got intercepted. Great job by Chapman trying to take that possession away, keeping some fight right now here in the game. Just as we return, we say goodbye. We'll see you after this break. You're watching Big Ten Plus.
Seems we're here to stay this time, Derek. A very quick moment of action, then the break. Woodard from the corner for three. What a way to welcome back the audience. Looks like everybody's eating right here on that Michigan State sideline. Everyone's scoring as much as possible. Julian Woodard, what a great inbound pass from Humper. Being able to get that one in. Thought that after that third quarter where they weren't able to score much, they got 17. They had no real chance of topping the century mark, but Spartans up to 89 points so far. An amazing fourth quarter for them at the moment. 22 points, Yale scoring one. That is very interesting that you said that, Joe, and that kind of tells the story of the game here. Michigan State having their way on both sides of the ball. Now they get their third point. Nice layup, easy finish by Chapman. Candy Blair, whistle is blown. Discussion between the referees, it will be called now on Odom. You've seen Kennedy Blair in these last couple games, the exhibition game as well. When she comes in with about a couple minutes left in the fourth quarter, she's been super aggressive, getting as many points as possible, taking the game into her hands, trying to score as many points, showing how good she is as a player. Sanai Douglas coming out of the game. Woodard for three, no good this time. Kennedy Blair getting sent to the ground. Four on five. Bulldogs trying to take advantage. Pulled out now by Chapman. Inside, off the glass, no good. Goes to the line for two. For Chapman, that last layup just a couple plays ago was her first made field goal of the game, one of eight. It has been a rough outing for one of Yale's best players on their team this season, one of their veterans. She scored 17 points in her last game, definitely not the start she wanted to the season. But great players bounce back from plays like this and games like this, and I guarantee she would do the same. Misses the first free throw. This is not the only sport going on here in East Lansing at the moment. Michigan State men's ice hockey taking on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Second free throw is good. Definitely want to shout out everybody working on that game as well. Marion Klein, Yusuf Anaya on the call. Kyle Keegan, my man. Big dog Kyle Keegan doing sidelines as well. Just want to shout out the crew over there. Working as hard as possible to get both of these shows to you guys. The Spartans leading three to two in that match so far. Candy Blair, no good on the shot. About eight minutes remaining in that match over at Mon Ice Arena. Chapman finds Long with the long three, bouncing up in the air, no good. It's a great shot right there from Long, trying to take that one, living up to her last name. Sinai Douglas finding Blair. Ever since I mentioned they might top the century mark, they haven't scored a point. And that trend continues. I think the jinx is real for you, Joe, today. today a couple of times you've been jinxing a lot of players when it comes to free throws, shots, all of it. Today it's been very real, Dan. We will see as they have three minutes remaining. Sinai Douglas finds Blair. Skip pass inside. Mang off the glass. 91 points for the Spartans. You can tell when it comes to all the players, the game plan is the same. Pass it around to try to get the open player. The Spartan players always have their eyes up, trying to see who's open on the floor to get the easiest points. That's what they did right there. Seems Yale called a timeout just to sub. Spartans made a few subs as well. Helen Holly coming out. Holly played a couple of minutes versus Oakland. Shot goes up for long, no good. Helen Holly, the freshman from Cleveland, Ohio, averaged a lot of points her senior year. Got 76 steals as well as total. Strong. She's a great player. Looking forward to seeing her develop this season. A lot of depth on this team, especially the youth side for the Spartans. Sanai Douglas, one of those new members. Whistle is blown. Douglas but tore ACL in her senior year. That's why she has the brace on right now. But she's definitely looking like she has ability, and she's getting close right there from Robin Freilich, but she has the ability to really learn from this and gain skills as a player. She's doing that right now with two minutes to go in the game. Freilich coaching up one of her young players after the foul was gone. Yale in the bonus. Free throw goes up for Lynn and goes it through the net.
Second does not go. And the Spartans, very youthful team out there at the moment. Blair on the ground fighting for the ball. When you look at the grades though, Candy Blair, redshirt freshman. Tanai Douglas, freshman. Mary Meng, redshirt freshman. Julian Woodard, for Woodard. She's sitting at a freshman as well, Dan. And now there's gonna be a quick break. Helen Holly being the final one on that. Just want to make my final point. They're also a freshman. So either red shirts or freshmen out there for the Spartans, letting the youth take the, the lead. Absolutely. Gotta let the youth take the lead right now. And they're getting valuable experience when it comes to playing in a game like this. We're gonna step aside for a moment as the Breslin gets loud. quick break here for us in the booth. Spartans and Bulldogs returning to the floor. One thing I want to talk about, Joe, is the shooting percentages. A couple minutes ago, Michigan State and Yale had the same three-point shooting percentage at 33%. It has changed since then to 15% for Yale, but their shooting percentage was exactly the same. The Spartans definitely have not been great when it comes to shooting beyond the arc today, looking to build on that as the season brings along. Very big aspect of the game, Derek. You mentioned they need to be building on it. Their free throws, they've had some issues there as well, 22 of 32. But for the Spartans, five of 15 from three. A lot of that being due to pouring out the bench pretty early in this one, Derek. They're getting valuable experience for every player of this team, it seems. Absolutely, everyone's seen the floor on the bench right now for Michigan State. Being able to test their freshmen, see how they can actually lead an offense. Blair unable to hold on, that's a turnover problem versus Oakland. Long reaching in too much, draws the foul. Blair had her eyes up looking at Douglas, didn't see the pass come in, kind of lost it right there. But Douglas, great job hustling to get the ball back, trying to keep it at Michigan State's possession. Douglas was also fouled, now she's gonna be on the line. That takes the Spartans into the bonus now. 14 different players for the Spartans touching the hardwood. Douglas gets the first free throw to go. In this game, Grace Van Sluten, the transfer, leading the team in points yet again, 19. Candy Blair leading in rebounds with six. Jaden Simmons leading an assist with four. That's actually Grace Van Sluten's high in a Spartan uniform, 19 points. She scored 15 her last game against Oakland. She's looking to build up and build up on that every single game she plays in a Spartan uniform. Yale gets a bucket near the end. 93 points for the Spartans, 41 for Yale. So you know the only player who hasn't played is Iceland Alexander. Mary Mang drawing the foul, the bench loving it. And yes, Iceland Alexander, I believe she's dealing with some injury problems at the moment. She got injured all last season against Wright State. Taking it slow to come back this season as well. As Mary Main, the reddish shirt freshman's on the line. First free throw is good for Mang. Mang is two for two on the free throw line today, making that three for three there. Four of four, Mary May, strong showing today. Spartans are at 95 points for those wondering if they have a chance to cross that century mark at home. This be a three and a two. It's definitely doable if they run here in transition. Missed shot by Egger. Clock is stopped as well. Foul will lead to free throws. Candy Blair, chance for two at the line. Edgar just fouled out right there. She got five fouls. Went straight to the bench after, but she's getting a ovation from the Yale fans in the crowd. Taking her out of the game. Woo! 
Egger had led the team in rebounds with 10. Blair gets the first free throw to fall. Kennedy Blair, 10 points on the night, four for six from shooting, two of three from the line so far. She's had definitely a very, very good game here. Second one's good as well. 97 for the Spartans. They've got to try and attempt, it would seem, unless they take the turnover. They've got a chance for 100 there. We'll be watching. Ball goes out of bounds, another turnover for Yale. That gives them 31 turnovers on the night. Spartans with 42 points off of those turnovers. It's a great job for Michigan State being able to capitalize, and now this is Michigan State's chance to be able to cross that 100 threshold right here. Driving inside, Woodard going for the two, gets it, going to the line. A chance to cross 100 yet again, Derek. What a quote right there from myself about 15 seconds ago. A chance to cross 100 and Julian Woodard being able to take the contact and do it. She has an opportunity right now to make it free. 99 points for the Spartans. The fans want 100. And they get it. Julian Woodard continuing the century streak for the Spartans to two regular season games. Three if you include the exhibition. What an electrifying offense for the Spartans. Long scoring a three to end the 7-0 run for the Spartans. That's a great job there from Long, the number one ranked player in Kansas coming out of high school. Definitely showing why she can play the game. And this team will dribble this one out. Thank you to everyone who made this show possible. Derek, thank you for joining me throughout this show. Everyone, back up. Agada Kaipula. Yeah, you heard now that we start high. Are you? Bro, you didn't know, bro. Ay. Ayo! Ah, 